Hey there, Libra. I'm Infinity and welcome to your April 2021 Tarot and Oracle reading for the entire month of April. Just so you know, I do not do weekly reads. I do new moon, full moon, and stargate sometimes, and um, maybe some other divine masculine feminine, that sort of thing. Uh, I am a little behind on these due to all sorts of different circumstances. It is uh, right now 10 p.m. in the Pacific on April 2nd when I am doing this reading for you, Libra. So um, welcome. Welcome to my channel. Welcome to this video. I hope you enjoy it. I hope you stay for the entire thing. These have been right around 50 minutes long. Um, so if that's kind of long for you, feel free to take it in, in sections and stages. Um, but we do get a little deep here with these readings. Um, we do some oracle and some tarot. And so without further ado, let's get right into it. A time to give rather than take. New moon in Virgo. A t <coughs> Excuse me. A time to give rather than take. Okay. I'm feeling something about like being out volunteering. Um, being in a group setting. Uh, a time to give rather than take i'm seeing those times seeing a garden um why won't these cards move uh i'm seeing i'm really feeling and picking up on the green in this card and we're jumping right into the tarot but i'm really picking up on the green in that card. I was told, look at the green. Think of the heart chakra. Think of opening up your heart, giving love. And it's like the more you're going to give, give love, the more you're going to give of yourself, be vulnerable. The, oh, there's a card. The the more, well, the more you're going to get, there's another card. We're taking six tarot. There's another card and another card and another card. Well, there we go. Okay. <clears throat> so I'm picking up on a few things here. So we may interweave stories here. We'll see how this goes depending on how many people I'm speaking to. And remember, this is a general read, um, so the entire read may not resonate with you, but maybe bits and pieces of it, possibly. I do work with several different card um, decks here. So, um, but if you are interested in a private read, check out my website, thehealingbutterfly.org, to see the different uh, readings that I have available. Okay. Let's get into the tarot. I'm just picking, trying to pick up on this energy a little bit more. And I've got fuzz all over my mind. What in the heck happened here? Okay, first card. Seven of Pentacles coming out in reverse. Let's leave it like that. I'll check in. Two of Swords in reverse. I'll check in with positions here in a minute. Three of Cups in reverse. Two of Cups in reverse. Ten of Wands, you guessed it, in reverse. And Ace of Pentacles, right side up. Wowza. Interesting. So let me just check in here about position.
Okay, so they all went straight up when I checked in, except for the Two of Wands. The Two of Wands came up in reverse and stays and remains in reverse. So there you go with your Two of Wands staying and remaining in reverse. The other one, Seven of Pentacles, Three of Cups, Two of Cups, and Ten of Wands, although coming out in reverse, something to take note of, but I was guided to put them straight up. Okay. So our first card here, Seven of Pentacles. It's really funny because I said I'm seeing a garden and here we have some seven of pentacles. They're reminding me. Guides are reminding me right now. You said garden and look at the seven of pentacles is him like planting the seed. It's probably kind of funny. <laughs> um, I kind of forgot until they reminded me. Um... And I'm, I, I'm feeling like this is, this is talking to and speaking to, uh, being patient. So like giving, giving things some time, giving things some real kind of tender, loving care and time, uh, to germinate, to propagate, to do what it needs to do to come into reality so and i'm hearing with this a time to give rather than take it's like give time give patience give faith give understanding give love though that type of giving um Mostly give faith is what I'm hearing. Give faith, patience, time. With this seven of pentacles, it really does speak to, to all of those things. Uh, <clears throat> two of swords, again, coming out in reverse. So what I'm getting with this card is that you're coming out out of a time of being confused a time of being feeling more on your own and this three of cups is really speaking to coming into alignment and i'm seeing this kind of in a couple different ways kind of literally like we see this card um and actually being part of a, a group and that being fairly new or maybe this hasn't even happened yet um let me just check in with that here for a second It's in process is what I'm getting. This is in, it's like, it's definitely in the in energetically and maybe it's just coming more, like more into the physical uh, little by little. Maybe these are people that you heard of or just are acquainted with or haven't spent much time with or will be spending time with but haven't yet or maybe you just haven't met these people at all yet. <clears throat> however after this three of cups we have the two of cups it did come out in reverse which i really love especially with this card because or this deck i should say because of the nature of the energy of it coming out in reverse is just really about just letting higher dimensional wisdom and knowledge and understanding and soul kind of stuff come down um which is kind of what this card represents anyway but this definitely again is representing a, a coming together um on a soul-based level 
And going into the future, ready to go into the future and being really optimistic about it. Like for, I'm kind of hearing like for the first time in a while, this situation is going to be like, or maybe the first time ever, honestly, it could be the first time ever that it's felt this right and that you haven't felt like, oh, this is temporary. And, and it's not because you're projecting fatalism into relationships. It's just the nature of the way that 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 timelines and cycles and people working on their whatever and you and all this stuff just things have an expiration date and and it's kind of like things begin with a certain kind of knowing of that is what i'm getting in some situations but with this and I'm feeling like it's a group, but I'm definitely feeling like it's a group. It may start with knowing one person, but it's going to expand. But I feel like it could be meeting one person, but it could also mean that you, you meet a group. Either way, it's definitely going to expand. And I, I do see that, that you are ready. And you, again, you are ready and you are optimistic. It is going to be um, a really good thing. It's going to be abundant. It's going to be happy. It's going to be um, emotional and physical and affectionate and there's going to be journeying and adventures and it this is really great honestly <laughs> this is a really this is really really it's it's very um it could be it definitely could be romantic it's definitely soul family so whether that be, whether that sh rom romance type affection and soul family business is definitely a possibility, but it's also a possibility that that it's just you know friendship, partnership, that sort of stuff, and it could be both because. When you meet this one person or this group, it's going to, you know, interchange her and it's going to be growing and expanding. So, yeah. <laughs> but you still seek and need your solitude. Let me just say that here real quick before we move on and get the a um, sacred geometry. Sacred geometry deck. So you definitely, it's really important for you to spend time alone, for you to keep clearing energy, for you to not get kind of too wrapped up in, in these people or this person. Remember patience, not to move too quickly. Things take time to grow. Um, yeah. Because it may even, this could be, that could be the other side of it too, is like things feeling like, so faded so you know soulmatey on whatever level that it's like let's do this and let's do this and let's do this kind of thing because it's like it's all mutual and it's talked about and it's not like oh how do they feel <laughs> it's like it's not like that at all it's definitely um you know, this is, this is how it is. So I would just say with that, and, and then we're going to move on here to just be patient, let things play out, you know, naturally know that, that everything is just how it's supposed to be when it is supposed to be, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. And we get, um, 285 Hertz optimal health and well-being. 
Look at this. I've actually not seen this card before. This is this is a pretty whoopsie. Oh, I dropped my other book I'm gonna need. Um this is a fairly new deck to me. I've only had it a maybe a month. Some oh, I opened right to it. Look at that. <laughs> uh Yep. Uh, so we have card number 24. Solfegio, Solfegio. I can never say that What right. Frequency 285 hertz. Optimal health and well-being. My body is my temple. Optimal health and well-being are my priority. So 285 hertz has appeared at a crucial time to remind you of keeping optimal health and well-being for your mind, body, and soul. Dear, beautiful Libra, many times during our physical lifetime, a light bulb moment occurs when we take note of how we are functioning at different levels. When we are out of balance and not honoring our body for what it is, for what is its ideal condition, choices and changes need to be made for healing you and your energetic bodies and frequency. By using certain sounds and frequencies, we're able to enhance our senses and create a deeper connection to spirit. Every sound has a different vibration. Frequency 285 hertz does not have a particular sound or color like those between 396 and 963. It does have its own vibrational frequency, which has immense healing, <coughs> excuse me, healing properties. This tone is said to be directly connected to our soul's blueprint and can bring our bodies back to optimal health on a cellular level. It is a tone to use in healing the whole you from cells to organs to damaged tissues and even burns, cuts, and wounds. It not only influences our physical body, but our energetic bodies as well. We have five bodies, by the way. What I find interesting is that if you change the numbers around, you get 528. This frequency returns DNA to its original state. As healing occurs at the DNA level, it creates a reverberation through all our fields, which not only creates optimal health physically, but increases our life force, balance, inner peace, and so on and practical application every soul has a blue blueprint it was written with before incarnating into this physical life the more in tune we are with our whole self the more amazing our healing possibilities are to return our cells and organs to their original form it is so important to listen to our body and soul it knows what is good for us and when we nurture abide to and honor ourselves we can keep our physical body in prime form if you are experiencing health issues this tone may be of benefit to you play the tone directly to a cut bruise broken bone torn muscle burn or organ and visualize the area you are ca concentrating on returning to its optimal state of health now if you find yourself neglecting your higher self sit in meditation or in a quiet space and ask yourself what it is you need to do differently to acquire balance health and harmony place crystals templates such as merkaba healing uh, that's card number four, herbs or something that carries a frequency that resonates with you on the affected area. Work with the color green for healing. And card numerology <coughs> is six. And crystal suggestions, mashalite, rose quartz, green calcite, uh, uh, purple fluorite, rhododendite, vogel wand, mercaba crystals, Shugnite and hematite. Okay. Um, yeah, I was really picking up on the color green. Um, and green is kind of it's in in the first card here. It's in this 285 here, pretty predominantly. Um it's also showing up here a lot in the two of cups. It's kind of hard to see it on the 
camera, but just more kind of more green in this area. And then here with the seven of pentacles, we have that tree or that bush, or whatever that's growing. I think pretty sure it's a tree. So just a lot of green, um, green with this big ace of pentacles. <laughs> so there's a lot of focused green. Um, green, blue, and purple is definitely the standout colors here. So paying attention to your heart, throat, and third eye and crown. Um, and definitely healing is in order. I'm not sure if I mentioned that earlier, but I definitely pick up on it with the, um, with this seven of pentacles even. And, and, uh, this is a great card. Really, really great card. Seven of Pentacles and the, the Moonology. It's a, a time to, what does it say? A time to give rather than take. So giving is an act of love. Love is healing. And so it's all connected in that way. And this is what it's saying um, here with this 285. Um, optimal health and well-being. This is about healing on a cellular level. Um, releasing releasing energies releasing the past um it's kind of more like releasing the need to control release releasing the need to know all the details healing from that need to 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 need to need to the need to control it's just, it's a thing about trust and faith and spirituality is the more that you lean into not controlling, the more that you'll see how well that works because you're not anxious, you're not stressed, you're, you're just allowing, you're not pressing, you're not pushing, you're open. It's a very different kind of energy. And that's like what we start here with is is the magic of faith is knowing that if I put energy if I if I plant the seed and I and I cover it with earth and I give it attention and it gets sunlight and I give it water and all that that it will turn into a tree I have faith in that why wouldn't it so that's the energy that's coming here um, so it's like saying this is what we need from you. We need you to give of this this type of faith and patience. Let let yourself be okay and know that the sense of confusion and being lost, not understanding and that all that kind of stuff just feeling a little foggy and stuff that is on its way out but you need to give to this healing space to this patience for healing and I would really suggest aside from working with a frequency 285 would be to think about you know working with working deeper with your energy through meditation or working with somebody um, that can help you energetically to really get down and deep um with with your with healing uh so that could be me it could be somebody else but this is definitely the kind of thing that i do and this is just about clearing out energies um definitely speaking to empaths here who understand that about themselves but at the same time it's like you know you can only go you you've only been able to go so far with what to do with yourself energetically for healing and clearing energy and connecting and releasing um understanding karma and the akashic records and different types of energies that can be or parasites that can be attached to you in different ways energetically um 
and sometimes and sometimes and with a lot of people we need help with that and so there's that's something to really consider here whether that's superficially through working with the energy of nature and crystals and herbs and oils um superficially with like energy work like re uh, like reiki or deeper with a shaman like myself um whatever it is wherever you're guided and however it's meant to play out for you it's time to do this it's time to let yourself be guided to where you need to go and be good and let and be in faith with the people that you're being brought to is I feel that while I talked earlier about this, you know, it could be romantic, could be could be friends. This could also be your being, you know, led to a a union kind of thing with your healer, with your spiritual guide. And um, that being a very propelling <coughs> propelling you forward type of timelines coming in like 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 just catapult kind of thing um so that's also something to consider okay let's move on to the archetype cards we have um this set of of cards comes with in four in four sets uh, or in four different categories, I should say, of archetypes. And that is the selves, the tools, the places, and the initiations or the themes of energy of where you happen to be at any given time. We are just going to get into two, the selves and the tools, and see what we get here for this. I'm really interested. <laughs> really interested. Because I know I'm talking to an empath. Um, and the differentiation between an empath and a light worker is just a light worker is somebody who's really compelled to use their life force for working with other people and with Gaia specifically empaths just, you know, stay in their lane, do their thing. Um, they're not necessarily like, um, you know, compelled to to have a life of service, but they're empath, but they're still empaths. I guess that's the best way I can I can describe it right now. I have that all written out much more concisely than I just. Oh, I feel it! I feel it! There it is. That's our self card, and let's get our tool. So this would be um, a tool that either we need to use or we need to let go of or we need to be, pay attention to. We need to understand more. We need to tap into the energy of to help us going forward. The ring. And this is a really new deck to me, so I have not yet seen this card. I'm pretty excited about getting into it. And, oh, interesting. The archetype for the self that came up is the crone. And what's really interesting about this is, sort of, is that the card that came up for, um, for Leo was the maiden. So the way that that trifecta goes is maiden, mother, crone. So it's just interesting. But I find a lot of things interesting. <laughs> okay, the ring is our tool. The crone is the self archetype that we're, we're that we should pay attention to at this time. Uh, so that is card number thirteen. Oops. The 
crone. Okay, here we go. The witch, the old woman, the sage. The crone has seen it all. Nothing frightens or surprises her. She is the final manifestation in the feminine trifecta of maiden mother crone. In her long life, she's witnessed endless cycles of death, sex, failure, rebirth, conflict, and regeneration, giving her the ability to rise above the world of duality. She laughs at notions of good or bad, right or wrong, as she has seen the earth churning, smoldering, taking life, and giving life. The crone energy accepts everything in, devouring beauty and suffering with the same mouth, using her energy to re reve reveal hidden secrets and knowledge. Her energy resides in all of us, though it it is feared by most for its power and unconventional relationship with death and the macabre. May, uh, awakening the crone is dangerously rich and unapologetically magic. Oh, I love it. I love it. I'm feeling all sorts of stuff coming in with this. When light, magic, clairvoyant, psychic, intuition, w intuitive, wise, and when dark, vindictive, bitter, isolated, and uh, ostracized. And the crone has a difficult time tolerating superficial, petty, day-to-day musings she moves away from such relationships and seeks a deeper path even if this means a more solidar solitary life i really relate to the crowd <laughs> not not just because i am of age of the crone but just everything about the crone i really relate to um the crone is a master of letting go and residing in what is in what is she reflects sorry she rejects nothing the crone is often seen with the crow smoke night and the moon <laughs> <clears throat> okay i'm gonna have some tea get my crone on <laughs> mm, yummy Oh, goodness gracious. Okay. So, again, the energy here was like with a time to give rather than take. And the seven of pentacles with be patient and let, you know, let things unfold and be in faith and and all of that stuff. The crone energy is that is asking you to, to really tap in with that energy of remember what was said here. It's like there is no this or that or right or wrong or black or or white or good or evil. It's as as that older, wiser person, the sage, we know that there is a lot of gray. There's a lot of of all sorts of weavings of energies in between any two sides of any anything and that anything that that we may perceive as bad also has a lot of positive and positive things can also carry its counterbalance in negatives and all of it is driven by our perception. And so, the other thing that I'm picking up with the crone was, again, that find this person to be a men to, to be your mentor, to help you understand that type of allowing of unfolding of pacing of not needing to actually do but to observe and if you're aligned with somebody like that that type of energy can wear off on you in a really good way because you see you can see by the example that they that they how they live and lead their life that 
they have faith and trust and patience and they do give unconditionally of themselves and apologetically they do accept the light and the shadow they are connected to and and very much at peace walking in at night alone during a full moon or a new moon or any of the stages and phases because it's all comfortable to to the crone to the sage to to the old wise one no matter what the actual gender is it's about the energy of of that that real like patience and that allowing for the the being in solitude the being alone the it being necessary to to really um like not only accept but enjoy how long a cake takes to bake sort of energy is what I'm getting like I kind of got lost in this vision I was getting <laughs> so sorry if this is coming out kind of slowly because I let I let it play out I let I let myself look at this vision that I was being shown and it was it was somebody who and who has the energy of well this to to have the best tasting cake you have to take your time with the ingredients and putting them together and then mixing everything up and putting it in the pan and putting it in the oven and letting it bake and enjoying the process having reverence in the unfoldment of that without it being like let's go fast quick now pop it in five minutes later in an instant like sort of sort of energy and being frustrated with things and how long something can take but more like really having reverence for it and really knowing that it's like that energy of the soup is better the next day kind of thing you know i'm talking a lot about food <laughs> It's a very crone energy, <laughs> but that's the, that's what I saw. That's what I saw come through here. Okay, let's look into the ring next. The ring and the crone. I love this set um, for uh, who is last. Virgo, we had the shaman and the stone. So that was a really, oh, right to it with the ring. So that was a really cool set. This is another really cool set. So let's get into it here with the ring. The infinite, the wheel, the connection. The ring is an image of connectedness. Rather than viewing life as linear, as a series of progressive achievements, the ring challenges us to sense the cyclical, infinite nature of our world and experiences. Beginnings and endings fall by the wayside as we practice seeing ourselves as part of the cosmic circulatory of creation. For this reason, it's no surprise a ring is worn on the finger to represent eternal love that surpasses space, time, and worldly things. So much can be projected onto this archetypal image because it mimics the Earth's orbit around our great sun and the intimate bond between two lovers. It is the micro and the macro united. This card calls us to deepen to deepen connection with self, other, and the world at large. Meanwhile, there may be a literal ring waiting to adorn your finger. Love it. When light, connectedness, humility, sac sacred cycles, when dark, unconscious rep repetition, starving for connection and uh take stock of the jewels you adorn yourself with 
watch out for rings you wear out of habit they keep you connected to the old you mm, that is great advice study images of the mandala the uh, unus mundus the orobos and the medicine wheel yep 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 i gotta say i have a, a special affinity for the infinity symbol since that is my spirit name infinity <laughs> and I actually have an Ouroboros ring here. Let me show you. So what that is, is like the snake eating like its own tail kind of thing. Um, I'm trying to get, there we go. I think. Anyway, hopefully you can see it. Um, there's something here about this ring that is, I'm hearing what goes around, comes around, something coming back around. And this is. some kind of synchronistic thing it may be you're gonna like it's a pattern or it's the wheel turning or something coming back around in this month of april that's going to intertwine with kind of it's going to bring in the past and the present and the future and one of the the big theme that came up when i tapped into my my guidance for this month was worlds collide and 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 it wasn't like an ex exploding worlds collide but a blending of worlds collide and it feels like that here with with this reading in a sense that your inner and your outer worlds your human aspect and your higher self your soul connection your um your connections with your with your guidance with your inner knowing with wanting to get there wanting to tap in we we kind of go through this like like what is that i don't know what that is no i don't want to know that too i really want to know that and it feels like that's where we're coming into and if anything it is like i said about patience just be patient with yourself because knowing the soul being guided by by your guides clearing and healing the energies that need to get out of the way so you can feel and hear and 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 move into your destiny into your soul purpose all that takes time so it's like a storm coming in and things get and i live in the mountains so i can really see this um and enjoy this these last few years where it's like oh a storm is coming it gets cold and windy and then the fog rolls in and 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 everything just changes and then after the rain comes then the mist and then after that then the sun com comes in and things start to burn off and all the fog and there's just this whole process to the whole thing and it's just so beautiful it's not just like in because we're up high here in the mountains so it's kind of like the the crone the sage is is up higher in in consciousness so when there is change and healing that comes in it's there is a process it's not just like oh i have a pain i have a remedy when you're in the lower level densities um, of energies oh there's this problem take a pill for it there's i have you know like i'm angry scream like you know what I, you know those like reactionary things to change and evolution it's it, it's a it's a different type of of process of process yeah okay so lastly here libra is we're gonna get into let me show you the hidden worlds oracle if i can hold them 
Let's see what we get here for you. With this reading, this has been a very interesting reading. Um, definitely about connections from the very beginning. Connections, patience, giving, giving and receiving, having faith, having tapping into that higher wisdom. Here we go tapping into that higher wisdom that sort of thing the crystal path card number 14 mineral spirits crystal beings oh this is great this will be very helpful because i if you have crystals awesome clear them charge them connect with them take pictures of them touch them get in the bath with them the ones that can take that type of of you know prolonged in the water and all that um well, let's get into it here oh excuse me okay the crystal path i have a big hair right here oh that is annoying there we go Okay, sorry. I was just like right here. Okay. Uh, mineral spirits, crystal beings, the crystal path. There are crystals that connect and communicate, both those within the earth and those which lie in their stores and in, their, in our homes are part of a greater crystal community. And even while they may be far from their birthplace they are often called into meetings with origin crystals which transfer more of their gifts to each of the crystals related to them in this way you are part of a soul family where even when you may not be physically present you are called into commune and soak up the energies necessary for your soul on its journey each of us is a part of a soul group and family and when we connect with crystals we too are becoming a part of their soul family they, and they become a part of ours and our paths for a time entwine and weave about you will be called into the master class for the soul soon when you are there will be crystals present charging you with the energy of the crystalline energies that are both of this world and galactic and universal this crystal path is cared for by those who understand the mineral magic of the earth and know that it connects to the other world other planets other times and places and beings the crystal path is opening up before you and the deepest lessons of these sentient minerals Mineral beings is yours to explore now. Illumination. I am part of a crystal family and I am called home to work with them. A path has been prepared for me to find them. Oh, I love this card so much. It's really, really deep and meaningful. Um, really telling you to connect. Like I said, connect with the crystals you already have. If you already have crystals. If you don't yet have crystals or you're not a rock collector, then begin to let yourself explore them. You can get them online. You can get them at your local stores. Um, whatever you're guided to is meant for you. They are little receivers of energy. Our um, April meditation, channeled guided meditation that I did, um, that was just put up yesterday and today it has a lot to do with crystals and connecting with the abundance matrix and Gaia and the crystalline grid and receiving energies and information so I highly suggest that you do that meditation if you haven't already and um, and before you get into any meditations, um, just sit for a moment and, and think of your crystals that you have and which ones you should um, go and take and be within whatever meditations that you do. Again, take them into the bath with you, the ones that can take that. And um, just know that any crystal that 
you are guided to that like i have my and i also have a a, a service where I, it's called crystal gathering with gaia where i go to my local crystal shop which is practically wholesale and they have the most amazing insane deals there and like right now they have these massive cathedrals i mean we're talking like this big for 150 or 200 dollars because they got a crazy deal and they just have a very specific way that they do what they do and and it is only a set markup for no matter what so you can get so if they get crazy deals you get crazy deals and and no matter what they they sell it's an amazing deal um so i'd say 99 percent of the crystals that i have in in my possession come came from their store it's in walking distance and i only charge a 30 dollars service to go there to connect with gaia to be guided to the crystals that are meant for you and um, you pay shipping and I send them off. So if you're interested in that, um, please check out my website. There's photographs of, of the crystals that are there. I mean, they're not there anymore, but you could see the type of prices and I don't mark up the crystals. Um, but anyway, tap in and get your crystals. This is really also, again, tapping in with this crone energy when you are ready to receive higher vibrational information you will be guided and feel the need to have crystals with you because they are very much connected to your to your guides and guardians and just gaia alone she alone is like the number one to connect to and she's who i connect to um first and foremost aside from your um, angelics and archangels it is Gaia because this is her body this is she is our great mother we live on her on her body and in her world and to get guidance from her to get energy from her this is energy from mother Gaia and there's no other way to see that um and and this is energy from Gaia. This is a Shiva Lingam. This is an Orca Agate. Uh, and they all have, this is an Amethyst. And they all have a very different vibration and frequency. But it is a constant. The thing with crystals that people don't understand is that they're so different than us because they don't fluctuate in their energy. They stay what they are. They can absorb energy and transmute energy, but they um, they don't change in in their frequency the way we do. Uh, so it's a so that's. So why they're so important to us and one of the reasons why they're so important to us is because their state of solid frequency is able to change and transmute ours um, and and we can go to different crystals um, for different energy uh, frequencies and to help us because um, of the type of energy that each one of them possesses and when we connect with them we are going in and connecting with the energy that they have within them and what and what they've downloaded for us so it's really important to think of them that way they're sentient in their own right they're alive they're 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 um created by the energy of gaia just like the spanish mosses or just like this amaryllis is or just like the sages or a rose is or you and i or a bee or or a goat has a has a frequency and all of us have come from gaia we're all from we're all birthed from her and so so when we're so when we Re read about how crystals are soul family take it on that level that it's like i i feel about crystals like 
like they're just so magical because they're they are of Gaia, but they are their own entity, their own connection to the universe, to Gaia and what they can what their what what their web of life is and how they're connected to us and and they're going to to be around for forever. I mean this this rose quartz point will outlive my great grandchildren's great grandchildren's great I, I mean it's never it's just this is an infinite energy an infinite thing that we can i mean it can be destroyed of course but if left alone to just be connected to it can it will outlast generations and that's just again tapping back into the to, to oh that was the that was the stone that was a different reading <laughs> but anyway i can just go on about this crystal thing and i do have a and i've been talking about it for a while just there's only one of me so there's only so much i can do but i do have a an article on crystals coming out and really explaining this because i have um, I've always been into crystals and rocks, but it definitely since my spiritual awakening, I've been guided to them in such a powerful way. But even in the last like six months, tapping in with them, tapping in with Merlin, working with Merlin very closely and with crystals and how important he's shown me that crystals are. And so, yeah, it's definitely been an uptake and uptick in in working and being connected to crystals and getting kind of that message out to people and in, in a lot of the channeled guided astral meditations that um, I facilitate in connecting with with Gaia crystals have been definitely coming into that realm as well to really connect and integrate with crystals in meditation so again I highly recommend you check out the latest energy update for april because it has that component in there so there you go libra this is a really deep and probably longer than the other um <laughs> uh readings as well um but i really hope that you give this some thought and some um real real um energy to these messages that you got here today and that you have a beautiful and magical uh april 2021 and i hope to see you here again soon and with that said have a wonderful uh rest of your day bye for now